Hello, a very good evening, a very good Thursday evening to you. Alan Biggs with a warm welcome to this sporting edition of Sheffield Live TV's Talking Sheffield for a Thursday evening. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce a couple of really old mates of mine with the emphasis, I think, on the word old. I don't want to sort of get set them against me immediately, but we have a legendary footballer who captured many a headline and a photographer who captured many of those headlines on film. Welcome to Mel Sterland and to uh, Sheffield star photographer for many years. You and I have been working about the same length of time. Right. Steve Ellis, known particularly to supporters of Sheffield Wednesday, has been part of the fixtures and fittings down there since when, Steve? Uh, about 73, 74. And you've captured some amazing scenes. It might seem that in recent years, uh, we've been in a trough and there hasn't been anything yeah. too memorable, but across the years we'll be seeing some of uh, Steve's fantastic work on film. And believe it or not, you've captured this ugly mug on more than a few occasions, yeah, haven't you? Since, since, since Mel came to Wednesday about 78, was it, Mel? As a young kid, as a, signed in 79. As a young boy, yeah. Been, <clears throat> great day, great time. Um, you know, just something where I wanted to do and play football for Sheffield Wednesday Football Club. Yeah. And, uh, and Stephen were there to take the photo, I believe it or not. He's, he's always been there. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's everywhere, sometimes where you don't want him to be, I think. <laughs> but I, I did tell you before we came on air, uh, Mel, that I wasn't going to ask you any difficult questions. That's right, isn't it? I did say that. Thank you, Alan. So is it right that you grew up as a blade? No, I did not grow up as a blade. Um, now, that room has been around for years and years. Alan, I'll tell you now, I've got a twin brother, and my twin brother is a Sheffield United fan. Mel Sterling's a Sheffield Wednesday fan, and always be a Sheffield Wednesday fan, Alan. Always has been, always will be. Absolutely, absolutely. But did you get annoyed about that rumour? Because it followed you around, didn't it? People <coughs> said, oh, you know, he was a blade when he was a kid and all that. Well, it's a situation where, you know, I don't think a lot of people know I've got a twin brother, believe it or not. I didn't. But, no. uh, yeah, I've got a twin brother, and he's a Sheffield United fan. Um, but a lot of people used to come up to me and say, what are you doing playing for them piggies? And I said, what are you on about, piggies? Sheffield United is the biggest. You know, I'm a Sheffield <laughs> Wednesday fan. No, but you support Sheffield. No, I don't support Sheffield United. I'm a Sheffield Wednesday fan through and through. And I went to as my first game as a 16-year-old boy. I went on the Cop Allen, and uh, it, it just it just got me, and I loved yeah. it. Yeah. And here you are, and I know that you're still just as enthusiastic about the game as ever. You still go to Hillsborough regularly? Yeah, me and my daughter, I shan't tell us to the games. Um, you know, we've got two season tickets down there. Um, obviously, it's disappointing that we're not uh, challenging for uh, in the playoffs. But, you know, the, uh, uh, the last chairman there who, uh, who sold the football club yeah. uh, did well for the club. Yeah. You know, he, he came in and put his money where his mouth is. OK, he's, he's gone away with quite a bit of money. But he deserves it, and this new uh, this new guy who's took over. Come let's on. hope he spins. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> what his name is, Alan. <laughs> Deep on Chansiri. 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 That's a nice. Well, yeah. if he was a footballer with a number on his shirt, I would just say number whatever. Yeah. I can't pronounce his name. I wish I could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so near and yet so far, isn't it, uh, Mel? For Sheffield Wednesday, top half of the championship. Looks to be close to the playoffs, but actually it's a big stretch, isn't it? It, it is a big stretch, uh, Alan. Um, you know, obviously the fans are, are being suffering again. Um, you know, hoping that Sheffield Wednesday will be up there pushing. Um, but it's difficult. You know, that that league is a great league. You know, um, it's a fantastic league. There's some good teams in there, but it's just disappointing that Sheffield Wednesday is not in there in the playoffs. Um, obviously, you know, fighting to get promotion. Mm. We'll talk about the game against Rotherham on Saturday a bit later. I know that you've got thoughts on Rotherham United and uh, <laughs> we won't go any, 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 any further than that. It's always a mischievous grin. Uh, James Gregg will be joining us to round up the whole sporting scene and Mel's relying on him when he comes back into the studio for the second half to update him on some football scores tonight. Why is that so important? Uh, because I've had a little football uh, accumulator, Alan, <laughs> and uh, you know, I sometimes win, sometimes lose. More times I lose. But, uh, you still haven't learned your lesson, then? No, 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 it's in me. It's in me. I had a racehorse. I, 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 I used to have a racehorse. He's then. struggling now because one team's losing 3 0 already. <laughs> yeah. That's Everton, isn't it? They're losing 3 1. No, no I bite Dynamo Cave. I bite 2 Oh, you're probably all 
far, is it? Yes, it's uh, Roma, but yeah. they're losing 3 yeah. 0. But it all started when I, yeah, I'm gambling, I love it. I used to have, I used to have a race horse, and it was uh, the worst thing I ever had. It had more shoes than my wife, Alan. <laughs> Every month, new shoes, new shoes, new shoes. But uh, we paid about £13,500 for it, and uh, we did ever so well, we sold it. Yeah. We sold it for £1,700, right. which is not bad business. But your book, I mean, your book was quite boringly titled. Wrote it with Nick Johnston. Uh, I spoke to him, actually. <laughs> now, very boring title of Boozing, Betting and Brawling. So pretty uneventful life then, Mo. Absolutely. The worst. Well, no, no, I wouldn't say a worst life. I've had an fa absolute fantastic life, Alan. You know, I've been lucky enough to travel the world, travel everywhere, you know, uh, play football, win championship medals, and obviously the, the book were, I thought, all right to come out, and uh, there were a lot, of, a lot of truth in that book. Uh, boozing, betting, and brawling, yeah. Obviously, I loved a pint. So, which of the three are you still doing? Uh, uh, you're still doing the betting? Yes, but not as much as li I'd like to. Because you're limited by... That's right. The finances, obviously. Yeah. Uh, boozing, I love a pint. Well, you don't get a belly like this if you... <laughs> If you don't drink, Alan, dear, let's be I've honest. I promised you a payment. <laughs> the fee you're getting tonight, I've got to take you for a pint. Is that just the one? Gallon. A gallon, not <laughs> just I one. I can't afford that. <laughs> but yeah. Not quite the same for me. <laughs> no, you can have lemonade. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, boozing, betting and brawling. Yeah. Boozing, yeah. Uh, I love I loved to go out and have a pint. Betting, I love to gamble. And then obviously when I'd got beat, uh, because I was drunk, and I'd used to get people coming up wanting to fight me, yeah. uh, like Chef United fans. Uh, so that's why I named it Boozing, Betting and Brawling. Yeah. Um, I love doing it with, with Nick, it was great. Um, and like I said, there's some great truths in, in, in the book. Um, obviously the one where uh, when I'd finished, I'd retired through football, Alan um, from Leeds. Um, I was going on depressed and, um, and I was going to commit suicide. I drove out to uh, Athersage and set everything up um, and um, got in the car and I just heard a voice, but, you know, it just said, what are you doing, you silly sod? Um, and to this day, it was my mum who told me to get out in the car. I'd got a lovely wife and two great kids. Uh, and I, I just came home and I, I cried. Um, and it, I was just depressed. At what I, I didn't know what I was going to do after I retired from, through football. Um, and I, I'm lucky because, you know, I've, I've been able to talk to people regarding it. I'm, here to, I'm still here to talk about it. You know, I've got a good mate of mine called Gary Speed who... Uh, who unfortunately did what he did. Um, and if he could have probably spoke to somebody regarding it, uh, he might have still been here in Ireland. But uh, um, he's a, he was a great guy, great footballer and a, a gentleman. So you drove out to Derbyshire? Yeah. Intending to... To commit suicide, the exhaust. Uh, exhaust yeah, yeah. I, I did it all, got it all sorted out. Um, it's, it was just uh, something what, you know, I'd had some drinks, a lot of brandy, and uh, it was just on my mind just to, you know, mm. what am I going to do now? You know, and mm. I went out, like I said to others, he'd set it all up, and I just heard this voice when I got in the car, set, set the engine not going and everything. You, you say you heard a voice in your head? In my head, and yeah. this is your mother's my voice? Mom, my mum, my mum who passed away, she died when I was 17 years old. Uh, and, you know, I just heard a voice, mm. and I just got out of the car and just broke down. Mm. Uh, and then obviously that's when I started to talk about it to my wife, uh, Charmaine. Mm. You've never felt that way, hopefully, since? Well, no, I've, I've, I, uh, I, I'm on medication for it. I do, I do take my, uh, my antidepressant uh, mm. drugs. As a lot of people do. I mean, yeah. if you knew how many people that's right, took yeah. them, it would be regarded in a much different way, I think. That's right. Well, I, I know I, I need to take mine. Mm. Uh, I, I've tried to come off of myself and... Uh, my wife says I'm uh, a nightmare, so uh, I, I still th take them. This is a typical scenario for ex-players, ex-players who are high on adrenaline, they don't know where they're going to get that thrill again, that high mm -hmm. of scoring a goal, winning a game, and perhaps it's not as understood a problem as it, as it should be. That's right, yeah. Uh, well, I, when I went through the situation, I, I never got no help from the PFA. Um, possibly reason is because I never talked to anybody regarding it. Uh, now, if I'd have talked to them, then I probably got some, got some mm. help. But because I were Mel Sterling, I were a footballer, 
You know, and there was a stigma about it. Absolutely. Which there isn't so much now, bearing in mind Clark Carlisle recently. Well, I spoke to Another. Clark. Yeah, I've spoke to Clark, and you know, I told him to. I wished him all his all the best, and let's. He's got good family around him, and yeah. hopefully good friends, mm. and uh, he can move on in his life. And he texted me back and said, "God bless you, Mel. Thank you very much for that." Mm. So, you know, it, it does help if you talk to people. And like I said at the time, I was, uh, I was really down. Um, didn't want to talk to nobody about the situation because who I was, what I did for a living, and how how, how the Elkin footballers get mm. depressed when they're earning mm. money and doing some of what they enjoy. But it's it's, the same illness. As, it's an illness, Al. Yeah, yeah. Because nothing can actually replace, or it's difficult to replace that high. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, OK, I didn't know that you were going to talk about that. I wasn't going to ask you, I, Mel, but thank you, for, thank you for taking us there. Thanks a lot, Alan. And, thank, and you. thank you for, hopefully, being a help to other people who, who may feel that way. Not necessarily sporting people, but in any walk of life, Steve, this can strike, can't it? Well, I mean, a lot of players are quite insecure, aren't they, Mel? Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, as Mel said, the fans see them as... Uh, as almost machines you know um, that just turn out on a Saturday and switch off at 20 to 5 and then switch back on the following Saturday at 3 o'clock it's not quite like it's that. not quite like that no we're going to go through Mel's career a lot of happier times oh look well. yes a lot yes. of happier oh, times as fantastic. well a lot of laughs and jokes uh, uh, along the way uh, and it's a wide-ranging career because you know Sheffield Wednesday uh, Leeds United, Glasgow Rangers, trophies are all of those, but Boston United as well. And dare I say, one England capsule. But let's have a look, because Steve, you've been fortunate, as I've been fortunate, to be around, to, 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 to record uh, many a fine football match, mm -hmm. a dramatic game, yeah. and you've got even closer to it than, than journalists have. You've been right down yeah. there on the touchline. You've been kind enough to uh, forward on some of your work, so we're going to have a quick look at uh, the uh, uh, Steve Ellis archive of uh, photographs, and one or two will appear on the screen. <laughs> and now then, which one is which? Which one? Which one is you, Mister? Well, I'm third from left. At the I don't back, know. Yeah? Is that no, him? that's me. I'm uh, with the teeth. You can see the teeth ah, there. Of course. Oh, that's we, we, Derek's, uh, Derek's testimonial game oh, with his good. grandson. Derek? Yeah, he's massive now. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe that. Now, this yeah. is signing for Sheffield Wednesday with Big Jack. Big now, Jack. if we've just freezed that there, and just, we'll, 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 we'll go on to some more pictures in a minute. You were telling me a great story about that day, <clears throat> what, the exchange between you and Jack. Well, Big Jack, you know, it was so funny because I was a bit scared, and, and obviously because I was signing professional contracts, and I said to my dad, you know, what shall I ask for? And my dad said, well, ask for £250 a week. So I went in on the Monday, knocked on the door, Jack's there with his flat cap on, smoking a cigarette, reading the Racing Post. And he said to me, uh, come in. And in I went and he said, well, what do you want then? And he had a puff of his fag. And I just turned around and said, what about £250 a week? And he went, <laughs> is that fell on the floor? Yeah, he just said, listen, sign that or get out. Mm -hmm. That's not the words you used earlier. <laughs> well, I can't obviously say what he did say, yeah, but he did say, you know, get out with yeah. a lot of swear words in there. And uh, I signed it for 50, 50 pounds a week and 60 pounds appearance so money. You didn't argue with him? I never argued with him. I, I, I was scared to argue with him. And, and obviously when I, when I came home and told me dad <clears throat> um, that I'd signed for that, uh, he said, why didn't you argue with him? So. Mm. But I didn't want to. I was scared as a young kid. What about the... I mean, everything that people say about Jack is true and more. <laughs> uh, what about the... When you were, he took you out in the countryside. Ah, the players, yeah. the players. Go yeah, he, well, he took about five or six of us. Uh, Charlie Williamson, myself, a, guy, a young lad called Craig Howard at the time. Mm -hmm. all, all the young apprentices. And um, he just said to us, right, I'm going to take you out. Yeah. So I said, well, what do you mean, take us out? So we got in his Range Rover, he took us out towards uh, Barnsley. And we get out of the Range Rover, and next minute this guy came up and gave us some sticks. <laughs> so we looked at each other and thought, well, what are, we, are we footballers or are we beaters? And yeah. he had us going in the fields, just smashing all the edge, going and making yeah. this silly noise so the pheasants could fly up so Jack could <laughs> shoot him. <them. laughs> 
<laughs> and it were amazing, it, honestly. It, it, we all just didn't know what to say, but we had to do it because he was the boss. But the best thing what, what came out of that is he bought us fish and chips. <laughs> at the end of it, which were quite good. <laughs> but uh, what well, Jack were amazing, that character. You were, you were t uh, Steve, you were recalling a story about when Jack signed... Uh uh, Ian, Ian Meller? Ian Meller and, and uh, Andy McCulloch. Yeah, what arrived was Jack doing at, that day? So he well, he, 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 Jack was out fishing at Lady Bower, so the two players <laughs> arrived at Hillsborough thinking they were going to be talking to Jack about a contract. Because uh, in those days, of course, the manager did the deal. Yeah. He, he, he negotiated the wages, the contract, the length of the contract, not as it is now with agents and uh, CEOs and you know, so the two players arrive at Hillsborough, Jack's at Lady Bella fishing. So Jack had ar arranged for a taxi to meet him at the Fair Lady Bower Inn yeah. at yeah. lunchtime, which was packed with people having lunch. Jack's negotiating with Andy and, uh, and Ian Meller at the bar. <laughs> Fantastic. Could you imagine doing that now, yeah. managers? <laughs> The, but the game's worse, the, the poorer for it, Steve. Oh, what are you talking so. about? I, I mean, we were talking earlier. I mean, the, there seems to be a, a, a lack of characters. Do you think that too, Mel? Yes, absolutely. Um, obviously, when I was playing, we you need characters in your, in your dressing room. Mm, you need yeah. people to have a laugh with you. You need people to take the mickey out. Yeah. And we had all that. You know, yeah. We had Gary Megson. Yeah. Oh, Used to take the Mickey all the time. Mego really? did. He was fantastic. You know, they were myself. Gary Shelton. Yeah. We used to. Mick Lyons. Mickey Lyons were brilliant. Yeah, great. Now, Mickey Lyons, a, a diamond. Mm. Um, yeah. Real nice know, bloke. Yeah. A great guy. Yeah. Great David guy. Grant. Granty. Smithy. You know, Peter Shirtley. Peter Paul Shirtley. Yeah. You know, you can go on and on. This yeah. day and age, I don't think there's any characters. Mm. Well, uh, I, I wish I had a pound for every time during the course of a season I hear a manager complaining about his dressing room being too quiet. <laughs> Well, I mean, and is that because you, you, of the way kids are now homing in, very introspective on, on their phones or shut off? I, I don't know. Or... I mean, uh, the, the thing was with, with Melzi, all the lads grouped together. Yeah. Uh, uh, and the team bonding was fantastic. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you, you, showed on a the lot field. of the players now don't actually live in the city. Mm. Mm. You don't, I don't think you've got that same bonding. Yeah. Um, oh, you're Sheffield, Barnsley. Rotherham, yeah. works up. Yeah. You know, they, we all, we were just a great, all great... all pal, palled about together. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, were, it were fantastic. But there's, not, there's nothing like that now. Um, you know, I'm not having to go at the foreigners, but, you know, the foreigners come in and... OK, great footballers. Techniques, fantastic. But I don't think you can have a laugh with them, Alan. You know, no. if, if you have a laugh, they'll probably think you're taking the mickey out of them or... Mm. And, and then, you know... I've, I've never known any fights going off in changing rooms this day and age. <laughs> when I were playing, there were fights all the time. In yeah. uh, the day of a game, training grounds, fights all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's, mm -hmm. that's because we were passionate about the football yeah. club. Yeah. Mickey Niggan used to say, and he'd see any, anybody fighting, he used to give you some boxing gloves. Loved it. Said, Go on, it, then. Come on, fight. Get, get on with it. Things didn't get out as much then either, did they? You must have, because you were so close to it. You, I mean, you walked, you used to walk the corridors of Hillsborough outside the dressing room. You yeah. the well, uh, the, the, privileged the, position. You must have turned well, a blind uh, eye to many. You, a... you, you, it is. It's a difficult. It's a difficult line to sort of cross because yeah. you get in access to certain areas yeah. that I've seen fan, some fantastic pictures that I could have taken. Yeah. But I've thought, no. <laughs> so it, it, it would have crossed the line. <coughs> it would have crossed the line. It's crossing the line between uh, not intruding too much yeah. and trying to get the picture. And I like, I like to think over the years that I've, you know, been trusted, really. Yes, that, well, it's evident that you have. You're there, um, your association with the club goes back, hmm. you're part of the furniture, everybody trusts you, everybody talks to you. And journalists also have the same line, really, yeah. that as you get to know people, you do get to know it's things just, that yeah. you have to keep... You have to keep private. It's an integrity, isn't it, yeah. at the yeah. end of the day? And that's the difficulty when, you, when clubs change managers because mm. you get a relationship with a manager, he goes, and then yeah. you, 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 you have to you're start almost again. starting again. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, it's, it's just not, not crossing the line, if you like. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, we've got some more uh, pictures uh, archived from the Steve Ellis archive lined up. Some of them not involving Mr. Sterland here. The, the um, all in black and white. Hey, by the way, we're, we're both in the pink tonight. I yeah. think at the interval, one of us has got to change here. One of us has got to change. Uh, we'll see. We'll change see. colours. Who's Just the away? Who's the away player? Right. Five minutes time. We'll be back with more from Steve and from Mel. See ya.